started then. Uh, before we begin, again, um, if you have any questions at any time, please uh, feel free to stop me and or you can put it in the chat, raise your hand or just come off mute and ask me questions. Uh, is there any questions you guys want to go over before we start in any of the new stuff for tonight? No? Okay. Let me share my screen. So when you're looking for the documentation, it's going to be linked up in the help. So if you, it will actually go to the correct um, page. It follows you around. So it's going to um, switch um, from page to page. From the left-hand side, you're gonna be able to navigate to any of the other sections that we have, okay? Now, um, we're going to start with, we're going to be doing the communications and the teams tonight. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more on the members. I can't remember, did I show you how to add a member the other day? Okay, so I'm just going to start there then. Okay, to add a new member or a new profile to the system, we're going to go to actually, we're going to go to the menu for manage and menu or member, sorry, and we're going to click add member. So again, um, as I said the other night, um, if you do go to the reports, just quickly go back there, and if you print off the re, uh, print registration form. This is going to tell you all the information that you need to have a confirmed profile. So it's going to list out all the information. Um, I like to keep this handy in my office for when, if I have some walk-ups or if somebody calls me on the phone, I'm gathering all the complete information to create a new profile. So that report is called print registration form. So, when you add a new member, it's always going to search for the whole um, Alberta Hawk or Alberta baseball to see if there's already a match. So I'm going to put Paul Tester in. And it's going to let me know that there is a Paul Tester already in the system. I do have this little circle with a plus sign in it. It's our, called our quick view. It just opens up in a pop-up window. So you're able to see information. So you can check out the birth, uh, date of birth, the address, and some basic information on the person to find out if it, that is the exact member that you're actually trying to find. That way you're not duplicating, creating um, more than profiles for the same person. If it is the same person and they are not in the right zone, you can transfer that profile. To transfer a profile, um, you can do it from the action button and you're going to create, oh, there's already a transfer in this one for this one. So it won't allow you to uh, transfer if there's already a request made, okay? So we'll find some donor, donor, are you going to like, are we going to need the full first name and full last name and birth date in order to search for somebody yes. that's already in the system? No. So when you're searching from here, um, you can, if you're searching for somebody that's outside of your zone, always use the bottom drop down or the third um, radio button. And you can just put in, so I could put P. T in, and it's going to search and it's going to find anyone that has first name, last name, PT. But you can also put, so if I put in a couple letters here and put a percentage sign, so maybe you don't know the full spelling of the last name, the percentage sign is the one that uh, helps you um, navigate through that. Okay. So you don't, you don't really need their birth date if you're just searching for No, something. no, you can, um, if you're searching, um, Anything other than your own, 
then you need at least partial first name and partial last name. Okay, thank you. Okay. What name can I use? So if you are creating a profile, you do have to put in all the mandatory information indicated by the red um, asterisks. So that's where that print registration form will come in handy for you. So when you are making a confirmed profile, you can mark it, or sorry, a new profile, you can make it a confirmed one or you can make it unconfirmed. So that um, an unconfirmed profile, again, would be ones that are missing some information that you need to collect, okay? So when you are setting up a, a profile from the actions buttons on the side, you can transfer a member. When you're transferring a member, you're always doing it from the person that, that the uh, member is coming into that association. So I can't transfer them right now because they're already in zone eight, okay? You can um, ask for, or if you have duplicate profiles, you can merge members together. You would search for the other, the name or the participant's number and you're able to merge them. We also have this validate member. What this is, so when you're adding uh, participants to a team, um, there is rules that you can set up in order to have them, like they may need certain qualifications or they have to be a certain age. There's two ways of doing the validate a member. Um, I will show you when we get into the teams the second way. But from this one, you can see this participant number is grayed out because it's already populated for you because you're in the member's profile. But this way you have to search for the team. I'm gonna create some teams afterwards and we, it would have a list of teams there. You can validate them as a player, a coach or a staff, an affiliate or an active player. When you validate, it's gonna come back and let you know if they're valid for the team or if there's something missing. So this is just for information purposes only, but it does come in handy. Um, for the initiative, um, I think, um, I'm not sure if that's there for your region or not. Uh, I may have to ask that question for you, okay? Um, let's go. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go and search for a member first. So I'm going to search for Todd Tester. So I found him. So I can either go to the profile or I can just click on it. So the side panel opens. You can see that he. Um, their primary is zone seven. From actions, I can request a transfer. Now I can make it a permanent transfer. I can make it a shared. If you're choosing non-resident player, this is really something that Ontario uses for hockey, but it is available to you. If you do that kind of transfer, you do have to set it up in the team restrictions in order for them to be um, able to play on that team. So we are gonna be looking at team restrictions in a few minutes. So I'm gonna put a share on here. I can set it up that it automatically applies or expires at the end of the season. I'm just gonna put a date on there. And now I have a list of reasons for the transfer. 
So we do have them all listed out um, in the documentations, but I'm just gonna pick share for a year. Now you do have an option to do a target team. So once we have teams set up, the one thing to, to notice about, or to know about the tar if you select a target team for this, it doesn't, um, any team restrictions that you have set up, it bypasses those. So it just automatically will put them on the team. So just watch out for that if, uh, if you do do target team. It does save a lot of time, especially when uh, every once in a while you get that one that you have to transfer that night because they're going to be playing a target team instead of waiting for the transfers to go all through the system. If you have, uh, you can enter details and if you need any supporting documents, um, maybe you need a proof of residency because they're moving from region to region, you can add those and click. Sorry, I'm in the testing site, so I don't think a workflow has been set up for this. If it had, I would go into the person's, the history tab, and I'm going to be able to see list of all the transfers there. Okay. You can also see all the transfers from the task and transfers menu. By default, the action required is checked off. Now, if you're not part of that workflow, you're just looking to see if a transfer has been approved or not, make sure you uncheck that and you can look for open transfers or you can look for closed or rejected as well. Um, I'll try to get the work uh, workflow set up um, if we have another session at all and I can show you exactly what it looks like. Okay. Is there any questions about doing any transfers? Okay, so we're gonna to go to settings next and we're gonna to go to team restrictions. Now, usually this is set up by your branch, uh, but you can do it at each uh, region as well. You can click add. So I can either set it up for, um, so I'm gonna say it, set it up for U18. I can add a category if I want, if I had category set up. So if but if I set it up just for my U18s, I can copy it and maybe I need to set it up for my AAAs afterwards. And I just modify as, as I go. So it's easier to set up the base level um, team restriction first, and then you can copy them and just make modifications. So I can add another division so I can set up two or three or four at a time if I wanted to. Now we do have um, different sections for team restrictions. If you, you do pick one of these options, you would check the side and you can enter the information or use the dropdown. Now the difference between enforced and active. So if I have my maximum number of players for the team, I'm gonna say 10 for my example, if I have it as just active and I add 11th person, it's going to give me a warning message, but it's going to allow me to do that. If I enforce it, I'm not able to add that 11th person. It's going to stop me from doing that. Okay. So you can set the number of players for the team, how many imports, how many affiliates you're allowed to have. Um, released tryout players, et cetera. The player allotment is, an, is adding up all of these. So if I set, um, like I can have two released, can have 10 affiliates, three imports. I have to make sure if I put in 15 here, this is not gonna add up and it's not gonna allow me to add players, okay? So you can go through each of these uh, team restrictions and choose which ones you want. You can say that the person has to have a, a, a registration in that season in order to be rostered to the team. You can have information on the jersey numbers, um, the release 
If you want to set a team fee, you can do that. You can also set up um, if you want to have emails notification anytime a team um, changes. So if a player gets added or if the status of the team changes, you can uh, set the minimum and maximum age for the players on the team. By default, it will just go by the age division, whatever is set in the system for that age. The override validation of primary team. If you have a player that plays on two different teams as a primary, uh, maybe they play on girls um, baseball and boys and their primary on both, you can set that to active or say yes so that the, that player is able to be added. Uh, you can set up qualifications that they are required for the full season. So if a coach um, has their qualification, um, but it expires halfway through the season, um, you can set it that they're not valid for the team. So they would have to have it until the end. Um, you can configure locked dates for your active players and your affiliate players. So when there's no longer as changes, it's able to be made. You can set up for if they need to have background checks done. And this is where I was saying to allow NRP. So that was the non-resident player transfer. Again, if you do use that type of transfer, you do have to say yes to this in order for um, that transfer player to be able to put on a team. Okay. We do have a section on how the, the roster is going to be printed. So you can select whether or not you want to have your affiliate players show up on the roster, your release players, um, print uh, approved players only, uh, which means that you may have some players that you've approved, but others you're still, um, maybe they got added afterwards and they still need to be checked off or maybe they're missing some qualification. So they, they're not approved yet. You can say that you can only print approved rosters or approved coaches. Um, et cetera. So there's a whole list of ones that you can uh, choose from. You can also select to have qualifications. So um, you can say like maybe a player has to have their respect in sport. Uh, I don't think qualifications are in my demo site, sorry. Um, but you can go in here and select which um, qualifications they have. Um, maybe they have to have um, a certain ones. You can say whether you can add, like if I add two of these qualifications in, I can say that they all have to be mandatory or at least one of the options are mandatory. And again, if I enforce it, it means I can't add them into the team unless they actually have that qualification. If I don't enforce it, it's just going to give me a warning message. So you can just keep adding all your the qualifications. So maybe you want to have one for coaches, et cetera. Okay. Is there any questions about setting up team restrictions? So let's go over to manage and go to teams now. So we're going to set up some teams. Um, the first year in the platform, you're going to have to set them all up from scratch. Afterwards, you're going to be able to roll um, teams over from year to year. So we're going to click um, Create Teams. Now you can do one at a time or you can do multiple. Um, this first option, we're going to do one. So I'm going to do Test. Team, I have to give it a short name. I can set up um, a fee for the name. I can, or for the team, I can set up home and away colors. Um, I do have to put a category in, um, and I have to put an address. Now you can set it up um, again. 
you can set up activity periods. So if you have uh, like a spring baseball, summer baseball, uh, winter baseball, you can set that up in the teams in the settings. And then you can indicate whether or not this is going to be a, for a certain team. By default, it's going to go to your regular season. I'm going to click next. Now I can skip this option if I want to, or I, if I have the information for a team contact, I can add it now. I'm going to skip. So if I need to make any changes, I could click edit. Again, I can add the team contact or I can create. So from the display, I now have a team set up. So I'm gonna add, create multiple teams now. I'm gonna click add. Oops. So I can copy from here. And it's going to duplicate everything I have, and then I can just change what I need to, or I can click add and start from scratch. Okay, when I'm ready, oops, I can click create. Is there any questions about that? So let's add some players to a team then. So we're gonna click in the team. I can either click from the side panel. Oops. You can either click on the, the team number or go from the side panel and go to go to profile. So at the top, it's gonna to give me some basic information on the team. You can see the status is draft. Um, there is the, the other statuses are rejected, um, pending, um, submitted for approval or approved. At the top, we do have a table. So it has all the breakdown of all the numbers of players um, between male, female, prefer not to, uh, to say, prefer not to describe, um, as well as the bench staff. One thing to know is pending deficiency. So when a player is added to a team, if they are missing that information on a profile, so they don't have their um, proof of residency or their, their um, address has not been confirmed, or they haven't signed the waivers, um, maybe they're missing um, some documents or something. It's gonna put a flag on the profile. When you try to approve or submit for approval, if they're missing any of those information, so those flags are on the profile, they are gonna show up as pending deficient. So they are not gonna be able to be approved on a roster until those flags are clear, okay? So uh, the team roster from each section, you can expand and you can add your roster. So I'm gonna add some active roster and then click add. Now you do have a few different tabs at the top. You can search by name. So I can either put um, a target name in uh, partials. I can put the participant ID number in. If I click search, it's going to give me anyone that's defaulted to that um, age group. I can search by team. So if I do have, uh, if I had players on a team, um, I could search by that. You can do past seasons uh, once you're one year into it. You can put a birth date range in, so you can search by that. The search in branch. So if I searched for Todd Tester, oh, it's mm. 
sorry, sometimes because I'm in the testing site, it doesn't set. What it does is if I, um, if this is permission-based to be able to do search and branch, you are able to search by first name, last name, and you're going to be able to do initiate a transfer that member right from here. We do have the validate member. So in this case, I do have to have a participant ID number. So let me grab one first. So I'm going to put a participant ID number in and I'm going to try, click ballot. So you can see that this is coming back. I initiated the transfer for Todd, but it hasn't been approved right now. So he's not linked to my association, so I'm not able to add him to the team. Plus, it's not um, valid for the age group that it's for. Um, I'll just I'll have to check on that. I'm pretty sure there's a way of importing players, um, but I think you have to open a ticket for that, and the programmers will do that for you. Okay. So, is there any questions about adding somebody to a team before we? Actually, I'm going to try to see if I can find a member first. Um, Give me one second. I'm just going to quickly add or set up a restriction that allows me to add this one. Okay, so now that I've changed the age category for um, in the team restrictions, um, you can see that it now is allowing me to add the, these players. So I'm gonna add a couple of them. I can use the quick view to open, to confirm any information if I needed to before I add them to the team. I can use the, um, the blue underneath to say which uh, player they wanted. The reason this is showing up is because um, the other day when we did the online registration, we registered Jane and Paul Tester and we asked for a position during that registration. So it is letting us know the um, specified uh, position that they requested, but I can always go in under the drop dropdown. Um, there should be some other ones there listed. I can say whether or not they're a tryout or an import, and I can click add. So you can see this one has a flag on the profile. So this profile is not confirmed. So if I try to submit the team for approval right now, I'm gonna go actions and I'm gonna submit for approval. It's letting me know that there's some that are have some flags, but I can submit, I can bypass it and I'm gonna submit anyways. So you can see the status is for, for Paul is um, pending deficient. Okay. So it's the exact same way for adding any affiliate players. You click add, you do the same process. Same for your bench staff. Okay. Um, no. 
so I don't have another bunch to. Is there any questions about adding somebody to a team? So from the actions buttons inside each of the, once you add somebody to a team, you're gonna have an action button there. From the actions um, in the affiliate and the um, active roster, you can have an edit roster. So I can go in here and I can change the position. I can add home and uh, away numbers for each player. I can click save. Also from the action button, I can send a communication. So if I'm selecting the, the action to send communication from the active roster section, it's only gonna pick people or the players up from that section. I can download to make a contact list. I can use the drop down so I can see who my testers are or who my players are. If I need to, I can remove any of them. I can add more players. And I can click next. So I do have to accept the terms and conditions. So this is for sports communication only. It's not for third party notices or any promotions or and stuff like that. I would put my message in and I would confirm. So again, when you are sending communications, it does go from a no reply email address. So any, if somebody replies to that email, it's going to go to whatever email address you're logged in as. So in that case, if somebody replies, it's going to go to my Sporal ID um, email. It's not going to come into the system. Okay. Only emails that are sent to another user in the system will show up in the inbox. Okay. So again, if you if I wanted to only send it to my team officials, I could do that once I have an action button here. I can also have a quick view. So this will open up all the players in the active roster. I like to do this when I'm doing it for my bench staff. So I can go and check the qualifications of my bench staff. I can go to the next tab. It's gonna stay on the, the same remain tab that I was on in the, the last one. So I can quickly go through all of them to make sure that everything is good before I submit my roster. From the right-hand side, it's gonna put it into a quick view history. I can come back later. I can remove anyone that I need to, or from the left-hand side, I can close all the tabs and it's gonna erase my history. Okay. Is there any questions before we move on? So the team info tab, you do have, you can click here to edit, but this is the information that we set up at the beginning. Again, you can add more con or, uh, contacts. Um, when you are submitting your team for approval, and if somebody um, rejects the team or um, approves the team, you, they can add comments at that time. You can also add a comment, maybe um, you added a player. So this message will go to the person that's going to be approving the team and they're going to be adding or um, updating that. So they're gonna get a notification for that. You're also gonna have logs for the team. So you're gonna have a date system and timestamp of when a change of a status has been made. Okay. Under settings, this is where you're gonna see all the team restrictions. So all of your registrars are gonna be able to um, verify anything that has been set up for them here. If there is something that is um, has a warning against it, it's going to show up as yellow here. So if there is a warning, 
You can verify the rules and check it. This blue verify rules will turn red. So it will let you know that there is a warning and here it'll be highlighted in red and you're gonna be able to see what the warning is and which player or team staff it's against. Okay, is there any questions about that? Uh, let me go back. Uh, I know I said we can do the communications from each of the sections, but from the actions at the top of the, um, the team page, you can also send um, communication. This is going to pick up all of your active, your bench staff, and your affiliate. So again, each section does have a download, so you can um, create a contact list, or you can remove people that you don't need to. Sorry, was there any questions about any of the teams before we move on? Okay, so um, just going back to members for a second, I'm gonna clear the history. Maybe I want to send, um, I can send a communication through here as well. So I can click on each line and send a communication just to that member. I can click so it picks up all of it, or I can use the arrow and it's going to select all or select the current page. And it goes the exact same steps as uh, setting up the email, you can remove it, you can make a download to make a contact list, and you accept the terms and conditions. The third way of using the, the communication tool is actually from the communication tab. So if I compose a message under organization, it's going to pick up anyone that has is a user or a staff member on your on that zone. So I would Click, I'm gonna check all of them. Again, I can remove anyone, I can download to make contact list, and I can send an email. Is there any questions about sending any of the, um, any communications at all? Can you send out bulk communications to your entire re registration? Yes, you can. You can either do it from the teams. So once you have your teams done, you would have to do it per team at a time if you're doing it that way. Um, once you're a year into the platform, you can send it to, from, to past teams as well. Um, the other way is just doing membership. So I can, if I didn't put any filters in, I'm going to get everyone in my association here. Um, I believe it does 500 at a time, though. I think that's the max. Now, is that like um, per year? So like right now during, through ramp, you can only send it out to like, let's say 2022's registrations or 2023's. Can you send okay. it out to like everybody you have in the system? Yeah, so the members, if, I'm, if I don't put um, a member type here, it's gonna pull all of my membership. So the type here gets reset every single year. So if I did select a, a member type, say if I just put player, it's then it's only going to pick up any players that I have. If I wanted to send anyone that didn't have a registration on file for this current year, I could do that and it's not it's going to pick up anyone that hasn't registered. But by default, if I don't select any filters here, um, I can narrow it down just by age group if I wanted to then it's only going to, it's going to pick up all membership, anyone that has a primary or a share to your association. And you can send an email to them. Is there any other questions about the communication tool?
So would it be like, if you're just trying to, you know, once we're a year or two in, and I just want to send an email in January to every player that played with me last season, mm -hmm. like, can you, can you uh, kind of restrict who, like, who gets it or is it going to pick up every player that's played with me the last two or three or however many years? So I'm just going to jump into um, the hockey camp just because it has some past. So I'm just going to pick a team. So if I go into last year, say I went to the Sharks. So I'm in last year's Sharks. It's going to pick up any anyone from here. So if I go to actions, it's in a communication. It's picking up all the players and I can just remove anyone that I don't need. Right now, I have to do it per team if I'm going to do it that way. I can't do more than one at a team at a time. But I could go from members and again, I could select a certain age group that I know those players played in that year. Um, I can switch the years as well. And then I'm going to pick up players that played. I mean, I can I can go put a player type. So I know last year, those are the players that played in that age group and I can send them an, an email. And I can, does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And again, I can make a download and contact list or I can remove. So you said uh, that it only sends like 500 at a time. Do we have to like break it up ourselves or will it send it in two different emails itself or like, do you know what I mean? So it's, you mean if you have like 600 members? Yeah. Well, 600 um, members with like two email addresses per profile, right? Um, I think it, it, well, it, it only picks up the members. So if I go into a member's profile, it's going to pick up whatever's in the primary section of the member's profile. Okay, so it'll only send one email per profile. Right. You okay. notice that when I did this and I went communication, there was a red box around this one. What this is letting me know is this member's profile does not have a primary email or in, in the primary box, it didn't have one. I can check to see if they had any contacts that had an email. If it did, I could select the other prime or the other email and it would send it. Okay. And when I'm doing that, let me go back there for a second. I can make a download of that to let me know that which profiles need to be updated with a primary um, email. but you wouldn't be able to send an email to the parent and to the player? Uh, not at this time. I think they're working on something for that. Okay, and sorry, did you answer the first question? Like, do we have to like break it up ourselves for the 500 emails or does the system figure that out for us? The system will uh, pick up 500 members. Okay. Sorry, that was unclear to me. And then what? Yeah. it picks up 500 members and then we have to pick uh, up the rest? Uh, yeah, then you would have to do the second search for them. And would it tell us who didn't get it? Um, I think it, it goes by the, um, if I go here, let me go back. Sorry, I'm jumping into hockey candy just because there's members in that one. So it'll show you what, how many pages it showed. So let me take off that one. No, of course I pick one that only has 178, but it's gonna let me know. I, you can either do a quick open and you can see which ones that it's done. So you can see where it's done or um, you're gonna be able to see at the bottom, um, which page number it left off at. 
And is it alphabetical or like, I'm just trying to figure out, we have like usually 800 registrants each year. So this would have to be a normal thing that we would have. Yeah. When I do it for my own association, um, I have 750 in mind. Um, I like to send it by age group. So I usually try to do a filter. So um, like I might, I might do my 12 to 13 year olds. So it's a certain age group. That way um, I know that I've, I've gotten all of them in the same email for the, that age group. It's just a, just how I do it, but, and then you, I know you have to send it a couple of times, but, but um, at least, you know, if something fails, uh, you know, which age group it was. Gonna check to see what make sure I so I think I covered everything that was on the list for tonight, but I'm happy to go back over anything. Um, or if you have any questions about any of the different sections, uh, feel free to ask me. No questions? Okay, well, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I will send Liam the recording tomorrow morning. And I guess next week we're starting with the, the associations, but if you have any questions, feel free to jump on.